The U.S. economy is totally dependent on consumer spending. Almost 70% of our GDP comes from consumer spending. And there were three different stories that came out today that tells me the U.S. consumer is in worse shape than even I thought. And that's a bold statement right there because in case you may have noticed, doom and gloom is kind of my thing. What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And while everybody is on Twitter today arguing over what the definition of a recession is, these three stories that just came out over the last few hours may make that whole debate irrelevant because it looks like the American consumer is in really tough position right now and the U.S. economy is almost entirely driven by consumer spending. And with that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head. And here's the first story, the big one. Walmart provides update for second quarter and fiscal year 2023. Company lowered their profit outlook for Q2 and full year 23. And this news is terrible. Keep in mind, this is the biggest retailer in the country. Walmart provided a business update today and revised its outlook for profit for the second quarter and full year, primarily due to pricing actions aimed to improve inventory levels at Walmart and Sam's Club in the U.S. and mix of sales. Comp sales for Walmart, excluding fuel, are expected to be about 6% for the quarter. Now, in any other year, that would be a decent number, 6% same-store sales growth. But in light of 9.1% inflation, that is negative real growth in Walmart sales. That means the consumer is getting squeezed by inflation, and they're buying less stuff at Walmart. This is higher than previously expected with a heavier mix of food and consumables, which is negatively affecting gross margin rate. Food inflation is double digits and higher than at the end of Q1. This is affecting customers' ability to spend on general merchandise categories and requiring more markdowns to move through the inventory, particularly apparel. Pay close attention, all you Nike and Under Armour shareholders. That apparel at Walmart is not moving. During the quarter, the company made progress reducing inventory, managing prices to reflect certain supply chain costs and inflation, and reducing storage costs associated with a backlog of shipping containers. Customers are choosing Walmart to save money during this inflationary period, and this is reflected in the company's continued market share gains in grocery. The increasing levels of food and fuel inflation are affecting how customers spend, and while we've made good progress clearing hardline categories, apparel in Walmart U.S. is requiring more markdown dollars. We're now anticipating more pressure on general merchandise in the back half. However, we're encouraged by the start we're seeing in school supplies in Walmart U.S., said Doug McMillian, Walmart Inc. President and Chief Executive Officer. By the way, the summer just got started. Shut the heck up about back to school already. Now, moving on, based on the current environment and the company's outlook for the remainder of the year, it's providing the following updates to its guidance. Consolidated net sales growth for the second quarter and full year is expected to be about 75 and 4.5% respectively, excluding divestitures. Net sales include a headwind from currency of about $1 billion in the second quarter. And there is that currency headwinds that I told you we'd be seeing in these earnings reports this quarter. Based on current exchange rate, the company expects a $1.8 billion headwind in the second half of the year. The company maintains its expectations for Walmart U.S. comp sales growth, excluding fuel, of about 3% in the back half of the year. That is god-awful same-store sales growth when you consider what the inflation is, just 3%. That's right now negative 6% real growth in their same-store sales. Terrible, terrible numbers for Walmart here. Operating income for the second quarter and full year is expected to decline 13 to 14% and 11 to 13% respectively. That is operating income. And again, adjusted for inflation, that is even worse. Walmart is getting absolutely crushed by inflation is what this report is telling us. And adjusted earnings per share for the second quarter and full year is expected to decline around 8 to 9% and 11 to 13% respectively. The rest of the report talks about some divestitures overseas, but suffice it to say, this is awful, awful news for Walmart shareholders. And again, this is the biggest brick and mortar retailer in the world, talking about 13, 14% reductions in operating profit. The American consumer is in bad financial shape. And what does that look like on the stock? Well, after hours today, not so good. Walmart shares trading down to $119 after hours, down $12.32 or 9.33% just since that news came out today. And this is on top of the terrible year-to-date performance of Walmart stock as it is. So right there, really bad news for the American consumer. But that was just one story of three. There was two other ones. Here's one. Weber cuts CEO 
and warns of layoffs as Grillmaker embraces historic economic challenges. Now, Weber Grills, right? Not exactly a barometer for the health of the American economy. It's kind of a niche product. They make grills. But this is indicative of people having less discretionary money available after buying food and fuel and rent that there's no money to spend on things like Weber Grills, which are awesome, by the way. I love my Weber Grill. Not sponsored by Weber, by the way, but I'm willing to talk. Weber, give me a call. We'll turn those sales around. Weber replaced CEO Chris Scherzinger and warned of upcoming layoffs on Monday, sending shares down 20% as the grill maker wrestles with a drop in sales and embraces historic macroeconomic challenges. The company did not disclose how many layoffs there could be or when they will occur, but said that it will provide additional details next month on a list of potential moves that also includes tightening its global inventory levels. Slower retail traffic in stores and online in all key markets from rising inflation, supply chain issues, fuel prices, and geopolitical uncertainty accounted for a decline in net sales, which fell 7% in the quarter ending June 30th, while net losses hit $51 million, as first reported by Reuters. A 7% drop in net sales, keep in mind that is not adjusted for inflation, so you can take another 9% off of that. And also notice they're saying slower retail traffic in all key markets. This is not isolated to any one state, region, or even country. They're seeing this everywhere. Weber shares are down 19.7% Monday morning to $6.03 from 7.54 Sunday afternoon and down to a third of its value from last August. Weber, which is based in Illinois, is far from the first U.S. company to announce potential job cuts this year as economists warn accelerating inflation could fuel a recession. Let's not talk anymore about what is and is not a recession. Face facts, folks, we are obviously in one. And last but not least, we got this one today. Why Bed Bath & Beyond is in a world of hurt, according to a former retail CEO. Bed Bath & Beyond has one foot in the grave and may be at risk of being pulled six feet under, one former retail CEO warned. Bed Bath & Beyond is in a world of hurt because they've burned an enormous amount of available cash, their business has no forward momentum, and now, as we all know, they have an enormous leadership gap that they'll have to fill, said Mark Cohen, Columbia University professor of retail studies and former long-term CEO of Sears Canada. I would not be at all surprised if they teeter-totter into a restructuring sometime in the beginning of 2023. Bed Bath & Beyond qualifies as a true retail disaster story ahead of the holiday shopping season. In late June, they announced a quarterly loss of $224 million for its adjusted operating profits. The company ended the quarter with a mere $107 million in cash, all of which is probably gone by now. The retailer also said it saw same-store sales crash 27% at its namesake brand in the most recent quarter as shoppers pulled back on discretionary purchases. Shopper also continued to shun the retailer's misguided move to scale back on its popular coupons. And keep in mind, folks, Bed Bath & Beyond, this is the quintessential discretionary spending, right? There's nothing in that store that might be considered a necessity. It's all things for decorating a bathroom or kitchen appliances, all things people can live without. And as inflation squeezes the average consumer, They are indeed living without these items at Bed Bath & Beyond. And now that we have a slowdown in the real estate market, although prices haven't come down, the number of sales is going down. And if there's fewer sales happening, then there are few people splurging on trips to Bed Bath & Beyond to buy all that stuff for the extra bathroom, the extra bedroom, or the bigger kitchen that they just bought. Now, any one of these stories taken by itself, maybe not a big trend, although the Walmart story, that's kind of a big one. But look at these three in aggregate. This is one day worth of news, folks. The Weber, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Walmart stories all came out today, just over a span of a couple of hours. And what's the net result? The American consumer is not spending money on discretionary items. After food, fuel, and rent, he's got nothing left to go spend anywhere else. Remember, U.S. GDP is 70% driven by consumer spending. So if the consumer is in bad shape, the entire American economy is in bad shape. So there is no point arguing anymore about whether or not we are in a recession or what a recession is or isn't. Folks, look at the American consumer. We are definitely into a recession. We're going to see more and more of that as earnings roll in this week. This is a crazy week of earnings starting tomorrow morning with Visa. And if the American consumer is in bad shape, it's a good bet we're going to get some lousy numbers from Visa tomorrow. Till next time, live small and dream big.